In exercise number four, we're going to be learning about how to create super elevation for our corridor using the super elevation tools in Open Roads Designer. If you're not familiar with the term super elevation, super elevation is the rotation of the pavement on the approach to and through a horizontal curve. The super elevation tools allow us to compute how the road will transition from normal cross slope to a fully super elevated section and then back again. So in this exercise, we're going to take a look at creating super elevation sections and lanes. We're going to take a look at calculating the super elevation transitions. We're going to learn how to create a super elevation report. And we'll also take a look at reviewing super elevation on our cross sections as well. Now before we begin, I just want to go over the general workflow for how super elevation would be set up inside of Open Roads Designer. Typically, we want to start with a 2D DGN file. This will be where the super elevation will be stored. Just like all of our other files that we've been working with so far, the super elevation information can be stored in a DGN file. We can also store it in with our geometry file or our corridor, but generally it's a best practice to store the super elevation in a separate file. Once you have it in a separate file, we want to attach our horizontal geometry. We want to create our super elevation sections and our lanes. We want to calculate our super elevation transitions and cross slopes. And then we want to review our data. And then we need to assign it to our corridor. So that's the things we are going to cover here in exercise number four. To begin, we need to create our super elevation sections and our lanes. We need to create a new 2D DGN file to create our super elevation in, or we need to open an existing file. So in my case, I already have an existing file created to um, store my super elevation or create my super elevation in. So I'm just going to go up to File on the ribbon tab, and it's going to take me to the backstage view here, and I'm going to browse to my super elevation file that I've already created ahead of time for our London Road corridor. So I'm going to open that up and once I open the file you're going to see I have uh, my geometry shows up here and the geometry is just a reference file that I've referenced in here ahead of time and I just did this to save some time and streamline the process a little bit um, but generally when you go to do this you're going to have a blank drawing and you'll have to attach your geometry. Geometry is always required for doing super elevation. So I'm creating my super elevation in a separate drawing. You can also create it in the corridor itself if you wanted to but a best practice is generally to keep it in a separate DGN file. To begin creating super elevation we must first create our super elevation sections and our super elevation lanes. So to do that, we're going to go to Corridors. Under Super Elevation, we're going to go to Create Super Elevation Sections. And notice the Create Super Elevation Section dialog pops up, as well as a heads up prompt is attached to your cursor asking you for a section name. So for this example, we're going to first set our feature definition for our super elevation section. So we're going to come over here to the feature definition, select Super Elevation. And then for the name, we're just going to use the default name of SE. And for the section name, we're just going to leave that set for section 1, or you can key in the name if it's not already there. We're going to use this name, section 1. And we're going to left click to accept. And now it's going to prompt us to locate the corridor or locate the alignment. So we're going to be using the alignment. So we're going to select the alignment. And then now we want to set the limits for our super elevation section. So the limits of our super elevation section, we want to press the Alt key to, to lock to the start station and left click to accept. And then to ending station, we're going to press the Alt key and lock to the end. And that just defines the limits of our super elevation along our corridor. So now we're going to left click to accept those values. And that brings us to another prompt here. It's asking us to enter the minimum tangent length between curves. Now I have three separate curves on this alignment. And what we could do is if we know what the minimum tangent length is based on our super elevation or requirements, we could enter that into this to this dialog here. And it would create multiple super elevation sections along the alignment per curve or per curve set. Now for this particular example, 
I just want one super elevation section along my corridor. I only have one design speed and I don't want to have multiple super elevation sections. So I'm going to set this to a very large value. So I'm going to set this to 10,000 so I just end up with one uh, super elevation section along my alignment. So I'm just going to set that to 10,000. I'm going to left click to accept and you see the super elevation section is created. Now if I wouldn't have changed that value to 10,000, if I would have just left it set for zero, I would have ended up with three separate super elevation sections. So I would have ended up with one per curve. And sometimes you may you may want to use that option, but for this particular example I just want one uh, super elevation section for my whole alignment. Now the next thing we need to do is create our super elevation lanes or our pavement lanes. If you recall, this particular project is a two-lane roadway, 12-foot lanes, and has a normal cross slope of minus 2%. So we're going to work on our creating our left lane first. So you'll see at the heads up prompt, it says enter the lane name. So for the, we're going to do the left lane first. So for the left lane name, I'm just going to key in left lane for my lane name. I'm going to left click to accept. This is going to be a primary lane, so I'm going to leave that set to the default of primary. And then for the side of the center line, since I want to create the left side, I want to use the down arrow on my keyboard to toggle to the left side of the center line for left. And then for the inside edge offset value, I want to leave that set for zero since this is a non-divided highway and we're going to be rotating about the center line here. Our inside edge offset is going to be zero, so there's no offset that we need to worry about. And then our lane width is going to be 12 feet, so we can just left click to accept that. Normal cross slope, we can key in minus 2%, then left click to accept that, and then the left lane is created. Now we want to continue on and create the right lane now. So we're still in the same command, now we want to create the right lane. So we want to key in right lane, and then left click to accept. This is a primary lane once again, left click to accept. Now on the side of the center line, if we just use the up or down arrow on the keyboard, we can toggle between left or right. So we want to set this for the right side of the center line. Left click to accept. Again, our inside edge offset value is going to be zero. And our lane width is going to be 12 feet. And our normal cross slope is going to be minus 2%. And then now our lanes are created. Now at this point, we're still inside of the command. So we want to right click to get us to the next uh, option here. And the next option here is to assign our design standards to the super elevation lanes. Now before I do this, I want to go and zoom into my super elevation lanes so you can see what was actually created. You can see I have some closed shapes here that were drawn along my alignment and those were drawn with a 12 foot width. So those represent my pavement that's going to be super elevated. So now what we want to do is we're going to look at our super elevation standards file here. And inside of this standards file are all your, your super elevation standards. And there's also some rules in there for how super elevation is going to be calculated and assigned to the super elevation lanes. So by default, we're just going to use the super elevation standards file that is delivered with the software. And in this case, we're going to be using the ASHTO 2011 Perial. Uh, super elevation standards that's delivered with the software. And this is just an XML file, so if you need to review it, you can open it up in any type of XML editor and review what's inside of the file. It can be edited and customized to your particular design standards as needed. What we're going to do is we're going to accept this, so we're going to left click to accept that standards file that's going to be applied and used to calculate our super elevation. So let's accept that. And now this is where we need to set our maximum super elevation value, so we're going to use our E value here, we're going to use an E value of 6% or E max of 6%. So we're going to use our down arrow on the keyboard once again to select 6% and left click to accept that. And then for our transition values, we can either use a speed table or we can use a formula, the Ashto Method 5 formula. We're just going to use the speed table here. So I'm just going to left click to accept that. And for the design speed, we're going to be using 50 miles an hour. So I'm just going to use the down arrow on my keyboard to toggle to 50 miles an hour. Left click to accept. And then for our pivot method, we're just going to pivot about the crown or the center line here. So I'm going to left click to accept that. And open editor, I'm just going to say no. We're not going to review the editor right now. So we're going to left click to accept that. And then what happens is the software goes in and it reviews the lanes and it reviews the super elevation 
standards file that we've attached and it does the calculations and it attaches them to our super elevation lanes. So now if you review the lanes inside of the file here, you'll notice the colors changed a little bit and uh, each lane now has some rainbow like colors on them indicating the various slope transitions along the alignment. And to review the super elevation section properties, we can select the super elevation section. If you right click on that and then you come over to the properties button here and you'll be able to see the super elevation section name, the feature definition that was used, the start station, the end station, the section name, the standards file that was used, the design speed, the pivot method, the E selection, and the L selection. So you can see all that information that was used to calculate the super elevation. You left click in the view to deselect and now we can review the super elevation lanes. So now if we come over here and we select one of the lanes just to review some of the super elevation information, I'm going to select my right lane first. And you can see now we have stations and cross slopes along the super elevation lanes, as, long as, as well as a graphical looking wedge shape here. And all these are um, text manipulators, so you can easily edit and manipulate the uh, super elevation by simply selecting a piece of text here and keying in a new value and that would update the super elevation information. And you can also select this graphical wedge here and also change the stationing as well by just dragging and moving your cursor along the uh, super elevation lane. The last thing to point out here is the graphical manipulators that are shown, these graphical wedge shapes here, they also serve as slope indicators indicating the direction of the cross slope. So just be aware of that when you're working with the uh, super elevation. In order to de deselect the lane, all you have to do is left click in the DGN file in the view. And then we're just going to go up here and fit our view and continue on. After you've created the super elevation, you may want to get a report and review it a little bit closer. So to get a super elevation report, we can select the super elevation section. We can go to super elevation report from the context sensitive menu that appears. And we'll click on super elevation report. And you can see here it has the section name, has the standards file that was used, tells us the design speed that was used, the pivot method, the E selection, and the L selection. So it gives you all the information about how the super elevation was calculated. And then down here in the uh, rest of the report, it, it lists the each lane, the stations, the cross slopes, the type of super elevation it is, and then the type of transition that was used to calculate the super elevation. So that was very handy information that are that is included inside the uh, super elevation report if you need that. So let's close this and continue on. In addition to reviewing the super elevation transitions in a report, Open Roads Designer also provides the ability to view an editable super elevation control line diagram. So if you're familiar with super elevation diagrams or more comfortable with working with a super elevation diagram, we do have the ability to review and edit the super elevation information using a super elevation control line diagram. So I'm going to show you how that we can create that next. To create the super elevation diagram, first want to select our super elevation section. So I want to go up to my element selector tool, select my super elevation section, and hover my cursor over the super elevation section shape until the context sensitive menu appears. And I'm going to select the open super elevation model. And what this does is it opens up a whole separate model view and places the super elevation control line information in the in the model view. So I'm going to open this up. I'm going to left click to accept this. It's going to prompt us to select or open a view. I'm going to open up view number eight from down here on the bottom of the screen. And I'll left click inside of the view. You're going to notice we now have our super elevation diagram drawn inside of this super elevation model view. And this is a special model view, just like we have for profile models and cross section models, except this is in a super elevation context. So we have our stationing along the horizontal axis on the bottom, and we have our cross slopes or cross slope information along the y axis on the side here. And each one of these control lines can be graphically edited. So if you select, say here for instance, the left lane, 
or the left control line. This is the lane that controls, this is the control line that controls the super elevation for the left side. You can see the dynamic text that appears as well as the graphical manipulators. If you need to adjust values, you can just simply select a value and key in a new value. That applies for cross slopes and text. If we select the uh, right lane control line, you can see we have the stationing and cross slopes as well as the other graphical manipulators. So this is just another way of creating and editing the super elevation as well as reviewing it. And one thing I'd like to point out is that this is linked to your super elevation lanes. So if you change your super elevation lanes, this diagram will update. And likewise, if you were to change the lanes graphically here, the super elevation lanes would change in the 2D plan view over here. So just be aware the two are related to each other and they will adjust. So rules and relationships still exist between the super elevation lanes and the super elevation diagram. Now that we have the super elevation created, we need to learn how to assign the super elevation to the corridor. Because at this point, all we've done is calculated our super elevation transitions. So now we need to apply those transitions to our corridor. So that's what we're going to learn how to do next. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.